before I talk about Devin Booker, I, I want to reference an article I remember reading a couple of months ago where it was talking about the explosion of 50-point games uh, that we've seen this year and in and, and recent memory. Um, and the article was trying to insinuate that the reason why, not insinuate, but it just went out and flat out and said it. The reason why there are more 50-point games, the author stated, is because players today are just more offensively skilled. Uh, there are more offensive players in position to score than there was before. And therefore, that's why you see more 50-point games. And as I read that, I thought that that was an easy cop-out answer. Uh, but I disagree with that. And um, I'll tell you why. I, I have people constantly tell me, you know, well, Michael, there are more stars today than there were uh, 20, 30 years ago. And I'll say this. Every team, virtually every team 30 years ago, had someone capable of scoring 40 points on any given night. Boston had McHale and Bird, who both scored 50 points in separate games for the Boston Celtics. Bird did it on multiple occasions. With Detroit, you had Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars, who both uh, were capable of scoring 30, uh, if not 40 points, on any given night. With Phoenix, you had Jeff Hornacek and um, Tom Chambers. And later, of course, the great Charles Barkley. All right, Cesar Sabalos scored 50 points in the NBA game. Uh, Mitch Richmond, uh, his career high, I believe, was 47. He did it on two occasions, I believe. He could drop 40 on you. Tim Hardaway, who could drop 30 to possibly 40 points on you. Uh, Carl Malone, Dominique Wilkins, uh, Julius Irvin, well, I, I don't know if I said Philadelphia, but Julius Irvin and Moses Malone could drop 40. Moses had a couple of 50-point games in his career. Uh, later on, a couple of years later, Reggie Miller, his career high, 57. Chuck Person, he could score 30, 40 points on you. Um, Larry Johnson could score 20 to 30 points on you. Alonzo Mourning could score 20 to 30 points. He had a 50-point offensive explosion. Uh, Anthony Hardaway could score points on you. Uh, he averaged 31 points per game in the 97 playoffs. Shaq could easily score 50, if not 60 points on you. Uh, do I have to keep going? Because I can keep going. Even the Clippers, the lowly Clippers, all right, the lowly Clippers had players who uh, were at least capable of scoring 20 to 25 to 30 points a game on you during the 1990s and 1980s. Um, the Nets, Derek Coleman, who could drop 20 to 30 points on you. Drazen Petrovic could drop 20 to 30 points on you. Dropped 44 points on uh, Red Pill Savers' beloved Houston Rockets. Dropped 44 points on Houston, Olajuwon and company in their prime, by the way. <laughs> Had to throw that one at them. Uh, but to get my point, every NBA team had players who could score. The difference between then and now Players, in my opinion, are consciously going for individual scoring. The, the, the difference is, and I think what it is, is, it's a reflection of the lack of the influence of the college game on the NBA now. The NBA now promotes individuality. Uh, you can see this picture right here. This was tonight after, after uh, Devin Booker scored 70 points. Uh, which set a new franchise record for the Phoenix Suns, obliterating the old record, which was set by, 
I believe, Tom Chambers in March of 1990. Uh, speaking of offensive explosions, uh, March of 1990, the NBA had three 60-point games. Three. Tom Chambers scored 60 points against uh, his old team, the Seattle Supersonics. Carl Malone got his career high of 61 in a blowout against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and Michael Jordan got his career high of 69 against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Also that buff, Patrick Ewan scored 51 points against the Boston Celtics, his career high. So you had four individual career highs in one month, but yet people say that the scoring is only happening now. But players are more individualistic now. Players are more selfish. When they look up and see that they have 42 points with six minutes remaining, they start going into shoot shot jack mode. Whereas in the past, <sighs> players who had that type of mentality were quickly benched. Usually, 50-point games, 60-point games came as a consequence consequence of having a hot shooting night and usually came within uh, the ebb and flow of a close game where a team's primary scorer who might be hot has an excuse to keep shooting the basketball because he's the only guy that's hitting his shots, at least with Kobe Bryant. At least with Kobe Bryant, his 81-point game, really, there wasn't anybody else doing anything. My big problem with the 81-point game, I think, was overrated because he was going against the Toronto Raptors, who finished the season the second-worst defensive team in the league at that time. I mean, in the 2005-2006 season. And at the time that Toronto played uh, the Lakers, uh, they were the worst defensive team in the NBA. I even seen a recent video where Jalen Rose questioned his coach uh, in the second half of the game and said, Coach, don't you think we should double-team him? He's the only guy shooting the basketball. He wanted to shoot the basketball 46 times that night. Why don't we double-team him? The coach got mad and I think uh, benched Jalen Rose or something like that toward the end of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Something like that. But at least the Lakers won. The Suns lost, and it wasn't a particularly close ball game at all. And you could see that Booker was consciously going for numbers in a game that was relatively meaningless, where the, where the, the Celtics had everything wrapped up, and they weren't really given the most defensive. If you look at, even if you look at highlights on YouTube, the defensive resistance was very negligible, to say the least. That was not a great performance. It was a selfish performance, a very selfish performance for a team that lost. Okay. Now, for tonight, Devin Booker's seasonal scoring average soared from 20.9 to 21.6. So that was great. But they lost. And for the season, the Suns are 22 and 51. What the hell are you celebrating about? You're one of the worst teams in the NBA. One of the worst teams. Now, you're going to see all this hoopla about, oh, well, he has the 10th highest scoring average of all time. Not even Michael Jordan scores many points. Oh, Shaq never scored as many points. This is the problem with today's sports world. They're too enthralled with individual scoring performances instead of looking at the whole body of work. Wasn't it... Didn't I make the point some videos ago, weeks ago, that Brandon Jennings scored 55 points in his seventh game in the NBA? And, you know, you were thought by that performance he would be a Hall of Famer. 
Brandon Jennings is currently a bench rider. Or at the very least, he's not a, a second or third option anywhere. Okay? Devin Booker, yes, he's only 20 years old. This is a, this is a very impressive individual scoring performance. Uh, especially if you're playing on NBA 2K17. He took 40 shots, shot a ton of free throws, a ton of free throws to get to that point total. And he was, in my opinion, very very selfish in the second half of this ball game to get those points. Uh, nobody else except for, I think, one other player had double figures. I think somebody scored 11 points for the team. This is the problem with the mindset of the NBA player today. They're all about individual statistics. They're trying to recreate a moment for Will Chamberlain here, but not realizing that that 100-point game that Will Chamberlain had, Will was actually kind of embarrassed that he scored that many points against the Knicks. And the Knicks were extremely irritated that he scored that many points against them. But Will Chamberlain was Will Chamberlain. It wasn't just a 100-point game. Uh, Will Chamberlain came into the season, came into that game, averaging damn near 50-point games, 50 points per game, excuse me. He came into that game averaging 49 points a game. He was averaging 49 points. The end of that season, there was a stretch where Will averaged 71 points a game. That's why he had finished the season averaging 50.4 points per game. It wasn't just one game. Will Chamberlain was a monster. Now, is Devin Booker going to be a great individual basketball player? Uh, he's shown that he can score the basketball. Uh, anytime you score 70 points, 70 points is still 70 points. But if anybody wants to say that this performance is up there with uh, David Thompson scoring 73 points the last game of the season to try to win the scoring title against George Gervin in 1978, no, it's not up there with that type of performance. It's just up here with David Robinson. Scoring 71 points in a similar situation against Shaq in 94. No, uh, this was a game that was not close. They lost at, at times during the game. I think it was a blowout. I don't get it. I, I don't understand why people are so enthralled with these performances. It's great, yes, but it was a selfish, selfish performance by this man. I just it's just selfish to me. I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't see what people are talking about, man. And you see people comparing him to Kobe Bryant and I, this is this is what's what's bad about the NBA, man. This is what bad about this is what turns me off about the NBA. It's just too much individual too much individualism, not enough team. They don't care. They care about what what are they celebrating? They're they're fuck they're freaking 30 games below 500. What are you celebrating? I would care less if I score 70 points. I would be upset that we're damn 22 and 51 in a year. That would I be upset about. They don't care. They're a bunch of rich, spoiled millionaires. Who only care about individual accolades. They don't want to be great players. They want attention. They want accolades. But they don't know what it takes to be great. And he doesn't know what it takes to be great. I'm done. Don't forget to hit that like button. And to subscribe. And also uh, follow me on Facebook. And on Twitter. The links will be in the description box. Thank you for your support. And I love you all.